1771, English chemist Joseph Priestley's experiments with plants sparked interest in the scientific community in what would later be known as photosynthesis. Most green plant photosynthesis takes place with the help of chlorophyll, just beneath the leaf surface in special bodies called chloroplasts. The green pigment chlorophyll lies within the chloroplast in long, thin membranes called lamella. And spaced out along these membranes are disc-like bodies called thylakoids. Thylakoids tend to occur one on top of the other in groups called grana, which look a lot like stacks of coins. In fact, grana in Latin means stacks of coins. The first major stage of photosynthesis, the light reaction, occurs here in the thylakoid, and everything required for the light reaction is found in the thylakoid membrane. This then is the setting. All we need now is light. Light falling on a leaf is either absorbed, transmitted, or reflected. When we look at an object, the color we perceive is the portion of the light spectrum that the object reflects and transmits. Because a leaf appears green, it must be reflecting and transmitting almost all of the green portion of the spectrum. This suggests, therefore, that wavelengths other than green are being absorbed by the leaf. Indeed, the red and violet wavelengths are absorbed almost entirely. It is chiefly the pigment chlorophyll that reflects green wavelengths and absorbs red and violet wavelengths. In fact, two different forms of chlorophyll play an important role in photosynthesis, with chlorophyll A being the more important of the two. The only structural difference between them is that this CH3 group in chlorophyll A is replaced by COH in chlorophyll B. These two green chlorophyll pigments are not the only pigments found in plants. Colorful gardens and fall landscapes offer proof of that. Other pigments called carotenoids give autumn leaves and most fruits and vegetables their color. The carotenoid beta-carotene, for example, gives carrots their bright orange hue. The amount of green chlorophyll in plants and trees depends mostly on light and temperature. As autumn progresses and the days become shorter and cooler, the chlorophyll pigments are the first to decompose. Red and yellow pigments like the carotenoids, remain behind, covering the landscape with a blanket of vibrant color, until they too become casualties of the approaching winter. With the return of spring and hot sunny days, the growth cycle begins again. While chlorophyll A absorbs the red and violet wavelengths almost entirely, other pigments, which include chlorophyll B and the carotenoids, absorb other wavelengths. These pigments then pass the energy absorbed onto chlorophyll A, which uses that energy to drive the light reaction of photosynthesis. So, besides giving us fall colors, the other pigments provide an energy boost to chlorophyll A and in so doing, improve the efficiency of photosynthesis. Because of the way they trap and redirect the energy of incoming light, these pigments are called antenna pigments. An antenna on a rooftop intercepts television signals and passes their energy onto your set while antenna pigments intercept light waves and pass 
their energy on to chlorophyll A. Well, you receive a better picture on your television set. Chlorophyll A receives more of the sun's light energy to carry out photosynthesis. Even though chlorophyll B has nearly the same molecular structure as chlorophyll A, it actually functions as an antenna pigment. Despite the differences in function of chlorophyll A and the antenna pigment, they all share an important feature, alternating single and double bonds. These alternating bonds can be easily seen here with chlorophyll and here with the beta carotene molecule. The double bonds represent electrons less tightly bound to the molecule. And because these are weak bonds, it takes less energy to jolt the electrons out of their orbits. In photosynthesis, that jolt is provided by light energy. Light, which exhibits properties of both waves and particles, consists of discrete bundles of energy called photons. Since each pigment molecule has very specific energy requirements, it only absorbs those wavelengths of light, or those photons, which supply the necessary punch. As we have seen, the antenna pigments the carotenoids in chlorophyll B absorb photons with energies other than those acceptable to chlorophyll A. The antenna pigment then pass the energy of the photons on to chlorophyll A in bucket brigade fashion. To do this effectively, the pigments are grouped together, so scientists believe, to form reaction centers called photosystems. Since a photosystem contains many different pigments, and each pigment has a preferred wavelength, the combined effect is an overall average wavelength that the photosystem, as a whole, absorbs. This average wavelength is determined by the number of each kind of pigment present in the photosystem. As it happens, only two kinds of photosystems are formed and each has a different average wavelength. For one, the average wavelength happens to be 680 nanometers, so it's called photosystem 680, or P680 for short. For the other photosystem, the average wavelength is 700 nanometers, so it's called photosystem 700, or P700. Both photosystems are needed to complete the light reaction. They occur in pairs within the thylakoid membrane, one P700 for each P680, forming what are called photosynthetic units. So, the photosynthetic unit is thought of as the actual physical unit that carries out the light reaction. Great job, men. See you in the morning. Good night, Phil. Good night, Phil.